Also, during these uh, several weeks, you know that we've been looking at the book of Isaiah. Uh, We looked at Isaiah and the message about, Behold, the Lord is doing a new thing. We also considered in the book of Isaiah that God gives comfort for His people. Last week, we thought about the idea that God gives strength for His people. In Isaiah chapter 43, the verses that we're looking at today, verses 1 through 7, the children, because of their disobedience, have been scattered among the nations. And they have been looking, unfortunately, for other sources to be their salvation. Tragically, even within the temple in Jerusalem, In addition to worshiping God, they brought in other idols. They brought in other altars. And even though God had warned the children time and time again that if they didn't turn and repent, that they would be dispersed, that they would be taken into Babylonian captivity, even though God had warned again and again, the people continued traveling on their own pathway, rejecting God. And yet, even as they were dispersed among the nations, today we read what God has to say about His children, and we read today a message about salvation and where it truly, truly comes from. And the pastor left his notes somewhere. Do you see my notes? I had them just a moment ago. Excuse me. I have them once more. When you are, when you and I are under stress, or when you and I are frustrated, you have seen these words before. There are three uh, reactions that we have when we're expecting things to happen one way and they go a different direction. One of our reactions is what people call fight. Someone cuts us off in traffic and our first reaction is also anger. And so if they yell at us, we yell at them. We just... Moments before we were fine, but suddenly there was a stressful situation. Or you're at work and a colleague comes in and a colleague says something very sharp to you, says something very negative to you, and instantly, just a moment before, you had been calm. But as they said something harsh to you, suddenly you got defensive as well. And that's called the fight. There's something within us. I'm going to protect myself. The opposite of of fight is fear, which is sometimes called flight. There there is something dangerous. I am walking through the forest, and suddenly I see the bear. And the reaction when I see the bear, and I'm not in the zoo. I'm not in the zoo where there's the nice bars, and there's the nice displays, and there's the nice uh, description that tells me all the wonderful things about a bear and how I should love bears, that, they should, that they're so good for the ecology. But when I'm walking in the forest and suddenly I see a bear, then there can be this reaction of, of fear, of flight, that I have to run away. There are other times that you and I face a situation of stress, and it, it freezes us. We, we're just, I, 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 I don't know what to do. I... I, I, I why did they even say that to me? I, I'm dumbfounded. I don't know how to react. I'm, I'm not fighting. I'm not, I'm not running away. I'm just I'm, I'm paralyzed because I don't know. Or the stress is so overwhelming that, again, I'm not fighting. I, I'm not running away, but I'm just, I'm just frozen. In at least one of our countries, there is an expression that has to do about a deer. You know, a deer that looks like a horse, but a deer, you know. There's an expression in at least one of our countries, 
that it's like a deer that's caught in the headlights of a car. Because a, a deer, when it's walking in modern times across a highway and suddenly a car approaches, there is a reaction. The deer doesn't know what to do. What, what are these lights that are coming towards me? And suddenly the deer is just completely frozen. It doesn't know, it doesn't know what to do. You and I, typically speaking, not spiritually speaking, but typically speaking, this coming week, in fact, even today at church, somebody will have some, you know, at least one member of our church will, will be in a conversation with another member that they didn't expect. There will be harsh words, there will be hard words, there will be sad words. And when somebody says something, even at church, we still have these reactions. Oh, you said that about me? Well, then I'll get even with you. Or, oh, that person makes me so stressed, I'm going to run away. It's ridiculous to say, but come on, you know it's true. You know it's true. There's times that you walk, you walk in this door and you see him coming in that door and you go out that door. I, I just don't want to confront the person. I'm just going to run away from it. And there's other times, though, that we're just frozen. We're so overwhelmed by stress that we don't know what to do. While these are typical reactions that we all can understand, today as we look at Isaiah chapter 43, let's consider verses 1 through 7. God says to the people, even though they have been dispersed, even though they are in captivity, even though it seems that hope for them is far away, in Isaiah chapter 43, God reminds His children, but now... Thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel. Insert your name right there. Who created you, Samuel? Who created you, Edward? Who created you, Jophi? Who created you, Emesheth? Put your name right there. Who is the person who created you? It is the Lord. He created you. He formed you. As our brother Akosh shared with us today, you are not here by accident. There is a reason. There is a purpose for your life. Such beautiful words from our brother Akosh. Uh, brother, help me if I can. Help me if I was a good listener. Polish name. Learned to speak English in Nigeria, but completely Hungarian heritage. If we were looking for a man who in his future life would need to work with internationals from multiple countries, just hypothetically, just saying theoretically, if there was an organization, let's just say of 300 different churches, Let's just say that, hypothetically. But we needed a man who could deal with people from multiple countries who understood from his own life experiences. Wouldn't it be neat if God created a man, formed a man, so that when the day came that that man needed to help other people relate, that the person named Akosh could be among us? Now, on the day of his birth, I would dare say no one could have predicted that he would be standing among us today. But God knew it. And the God who created you, the God who formed you, He doesn't have you here by accident. There is a reason and there is a purpose for you to be here in Budapest at this time. Fear not. They're, they've been dispersed. Their beautiful city has been destroyed. They've been taken off into captivity. But God says, the person who created them, the person who formed them, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by My name. You are Mine. And that word redemption in the Hebrew language talks about buying something back. 
having the right of redemption means that here is something that's very valuable. Here's something that's very precious. It's been put up for sale. It's been taken away. But here's someone who has the right, who has the authority to redeem that. So no matter what has happened in your life, no matter where you have gone, no matter what kind of spiritual bondage you might be in today, perhaps not physical bondage, but spiritual bondage, you might also be suffering today emotional bondage. There are things that have happened in your background, and so spiritually you're in a wilderness. Physically, you're in the beautiful city of Budapest. And whoever was brilliant enough to think about, let's put gold street lights. I mean, my goodness, what a beautiful city we live in. It's fine in the daytime, but at nighttime when the darkness settles in, but those golden lights come on and you can be on the Danube River. You can look to the north. You can look to the south. You can go to the top of Gellert Hill. You can see Buddha. You can see Pesh. My goodness, we're living in a beautiful city, but you're trapped emotionally. Physically, you know that you're trapped emotionally because of what's happened in your life. But the God who created you, the God who formed you, says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. For us, these verses might be very, very spiritual. For the very, very first people, they were spiritual plus literal. They had been taken into literal captivity. But he continues in verse 2 and says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. That phrase, when you walk through fire, during the time of the writing of the Old Testament, that was a symbolic phrase. And there are different passages in the Bible that it talks about as you can use fire to burn away the dross of silver or of gold. As you can use fire to refine things. Symbolically, there was an idiom, there was a phrase during their time that whenever you go through the fire, as it were, it burns away what's dross. It takes away the impurities. Even when you go through the fire, the Lord says, The flame will not consume you. Verse 3, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Sheba, in exchange for you. That again is a very interesting phrase. If we were writing it in modern times, we could say this. Allow me a little bit of poetic license, okay? But here's what he's saying here in verse 3. I give the entire continent of Africa and every single nation and all of its majesty and power in exchange for you, Israel, who are nothing but a little bitty worm. That is what's caught up in that phrase. I give Egypt as your ransom. The world power of the day. I give all of the nations in that time, Cush and Sheba. Can you imagine, and my brothers from Africa, excuse my ignorance, okay? As I did some reading this week, I didn't come to a conclusive answer. Currently, some listings say there are 54 nations in Africa. Some say 55. I don't know which was the correct number. So, my brothers and sisters from Africa, please forgive me. But Israel, this country that had been dispersed because of their disobedience, God says, I am your Savior. And even though you're nothing in comparison, I believe it's still true. Isn't it true, Madam Ambassador, Nigeria is the most populous nation in Africa. Okay? So in our modern times, we might look to Nigeria, or we might look to Ghana, or we might look to Congo, or we might look to the Republic of Central Africa, 
or Zimbabwe or Zambia, but in this time, Israel, my child, I love you. And there are all of these other nations that candidly are much more powerful than you. But I am going to to ransom you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. You have a simple blue handout in your bulletin today with this simple thought. In the English Standard Version, and we have to make a choice. There are so many different versions of the Bible that we read today. But just looking at that resource, the English Standard Version, that blue insert that you have, there are 33 different passages in the Bible that that exact phrase is used, fear not. And you can see God saying to Abram, fear not. You can see God speaking to other children and saying, fear not. And the same God of the Bible is the same God of today. And He would say to your heart today, fear not. You're facing that medical diagnosis. You're facing that financial situation. You're facing that stressful situation at work. You have family members that are very upset with you and you don't know how to respond to them. The same God of the Bible, 33 different times that exact phrase in multiple situations of life. What are you fearful about today? Your typical physical, emotional reaction. What is causing you stress today? What is the uncertainty that's that's weighing and wearing upon you today? The God of the Bible is the same God of today who says to my heart, who says to your heart, fear not. And it's interesting, of the 33 times that the Bible has that exact phrase, fear not, it's the book of Isaiah that has that phrase 11 times. Eleven different times in the book of Isaiah, one-third of all the times in the Bible, God is speaking through Isaiah that says, even though you've been disobedient, even though you have turned your back on me, I haven't forgotten you. Fear not. The second phrase, when. When you walk through the fire. Folks, You're going to walk through the fire. I don't know what the fire is going to be in your life, but you're going to walk through the fire. And as you walk through the fire, it's going to be an overwhelming experience. But by rooting yourself in the Scripture, by building your foundation upon the Scripture, you can have confidence in your Lord. Why? Because God says, I am your Savior. I am your Savior. Not the military power of the world. Not the financial stability of the world. Not the expertise and wisdom of other people. The One who created you and the One who formed you, He is the One who will save you when you go through the fire. I am your Savior. And who are you, child of God? You are mine. You are mine. One of the only times you and I ever get to go to a hospital when it's a sign of health is because of the birth of a baby. Almost every other time that you and I ever go to the hospital, it's because of some sign of illness. 
But on the rare occasions that we get to go to the hospital because someone's given birth to a baby, that's a sign of health. And as a father, for the first time, and there's different ways hospitals are set up around the world, but as a father who walks up to that room that they had in the American hospital where they had all of those little beautiful babies in all of those little baskets, and there was a separation of glass. And it was great that there were maybe 20 or 30 babies in that room. You know what Papa was looking for? I'm looking for mine. That one is mine. Bring that one to me. And the God who created you, the God who formed you, when you're going through the fire, who's going to be the Savior? He's going to be the Savior. And who are you? You are His. That's who you are. And what does He say about you? I love you. The God of all creation is the God who loves you. And everyone who is called by My name, whether from the north to the south, from the east to the west, in this situation it was literal, it was physical. In our situation, it could be purely spiritual. No, we're here. We've not been scattered. But we've gone away from God for whatever reason but everyone who is called by My name. Sadly, you and I spend too much of our lives dominated by fear. It's not supposed to be that way, but we allow fear to dominate too much of our lives. We allow other things to be our Savior. We allow other things to be our confidence. We allow other things to be our strength. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we see what was true in the Old Testament, but very quickly we can remind ourselves that the same things that were true in the Old Testament, they continue to be true in the New Testament and to our time as well. In John chapter 3, verse 16, in Isaiah, God says, I love you. My child, and in John chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. The God who created you, the God who formed you, is the God who loves you. The God who gave His only Son so that you could have salvation. In Second Peter Chapter 3, 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. The Apostle Peter writing says, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will not be exposed. If it seems that God is slow, remember this. God is patient. And God knows what will bring about the best result in your life. For the Lord, His timetable is different than our timetable. We want things on a certain schedule. God wants it at the right time for you. For your good. So even if there seems to be a delay, remember this. The Lord fulfills His promises. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7,
Paul is writing to Timothy and says, beginning in verse 6, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Where does your salvation come from? It comes from the Lord. And instead of being dominated by a spirit of fear, what does the Lord give you? He gives you as His child a spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit of self-control. As we go into our final uh, moments today of, of the sermon. Do you have today a proper understanding of God's love? As you see the Bible, do you have a proper understanding of God? The God who created you, the God who formed you, the God who loves you. And because He loves you, there will be moments in your life that He will discipline you. And if you're facing one of those moments today, what is God intending for your life today as you pass through the fire? As you pass through the waters? What is God's love for you today? What is His purpose for you? As you have a proper understanding of God's love, do you have a proper understanding of yourself, of myself? As I see God properly, do I also see myself properly? Not arrogantly. Not in a self-centered way. But God created me. God formed me. There's a purpose for my life. There's a reason for me to be here today. This is the God of the universe. And as I properly understand Him, He encourages me through His Word to understand myself and my responsibility, my role, and ultimately a proper understanding of my situation. If you are truly going through waters, if you're truly going through fire, it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to make a great story five years from now. It's going to be painful. It's going to be hurtful. It's going to be distressing. You're going to have sleepless nights. People who are preaching some gospel that says all you got to do is treat God like an investment banker. If you give God money, He's suddenly going to make you wealthy. God, God of the Bible is not that God. The false gospel of prosperity that's sweeping our lands, not just land, lands, treat God like the ultimate investment banker and everything's going to be okay. No. That little widow who gave an offering that made absolutely no difference for the budget of the temple. That little widow who gave that, it meant nothing in the budget of the temple. It meant everything as God examined her heart. And so, yes, you will make decisions, and they will be painful decisions. You will be overlooked for job promotions if you are a woman of integrity in the workplace. It is going to happen. You will be asked to do something immoral. And if you refuse to do something immoral, someone else will get the promotion that you rightfully deserve. It will happen. So when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the fires, it's going to make a great story Five years from now. But this exact moment, you better go back to the Scripture and make sure that you have a proper understanding of God and His love, that you have a proper understanding of yourself and what's happening 
and that you have a proper understanding of the situation. It will be a refining experience, but it will also be painful. But fear not. God says, fear not. I will be with you. A, uh, a father years ago was talking about his little girl was playing. She wasn't doing anything wrong. She was just a little girl. She was playing. And as she was playing outside, she fell and she broke her arm. And as, and as that father picked up his little girl and took her to the hospital, his little daughter kept looking up in, into her father's face and she kept saying, Daddy, don't let them hurt me. Daddy, don't let them hurt me. Daddy, don't let them hurt me. And his heart was broken because as a daddy, he knew they were going to hurt his little girl. He knew that to set that broken arm, it was going to be a painful process. And so he couldn't tell his little girl that they weren't going to hurt her. But he could carry her through the whole process in his arms. God's going to carry you in His arms. It doesn't mean that you won't go through a painful process. But fear not. He who created you, He who formed you, He will be with you when you pass through the waters. He will be the one who saves you and rescues you from the fire that you face. Let's pray. Father, as we are tempted in our own lives by fear, by stress, by hard situations, help us, Father, to retain our focus upon You. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Today, as our young people lead us in this final song, if you are here today and God spoke to you as our brother was speaking and you say, you know, I know that God wants me to be a church planter. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Come and talk with me. We'll talk. We'll pray. We'll see what God has next. Or if you're here today and you say, you know, I, I've heard a lot about God. I've heard that there's a God of love, but I've never accepted Him as my Savior. Come, we can talk today. And even today, you can accept the God of the universe, the God who created everything, the God who created you and formed you. Today, you can accept Him as your Savior. As our, as our young people lead us in this song, I'll be here. If you need to speak with someone, please come and we can talk. Let's stand as we sing this song together.